we were making the point, do you want to promote the league or not? And people like Andrea and others were resistant to that playing a role in somebody making the roster for Team USA. And we were saying, hell with that. You want to promote the sport. You put that girl up in there, and people were appalled at that notion. No, 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 Andrea, I'm not going to let you do that. Go ahead, Andrea, go ahead, go ahead, I'm not going to let you make it seem like Caitlin Clark was averaging five points a game. At the time, she that. was still averaging 16 points a game, which was more than a lot of other guards that made the team. So don't there, do that. Don't I make it seem you. like she was but averaging five questions. points, and this was like a handout. No, it wasn't, it wasn't a handout. Hand Look at her numbers Shannon. comparable to the other guards that were on the team. That's I all I'm you. saying. No, no, no. In a recent episode of ESPN's First Take, tensions flared as Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith found themselves at odds with their colleagues Andrea Carter and Molly Caram over the topic of WNBA sensation Caitlin Clark. The debate centered around Clark's exclusion from the U.S. Olympic team and her remarkable rookie season in the WNBA. What unfolded was a heated exchange that exposed a deeper rift in how Clark's rapid rise to stardom is being perceived within the sports media landscape. Girl, Andrea Carter's here. All right, I got a quick take for you. The Aces started their quest for a three-peat yesterday, took care of business against the Storm. Asia Wilson led all scores, Drea, 21 points. While the discussion initially focused on the WNBA playoffs, it quickly shifted to Caitlin Clark's impact on the league. Shannon Sharp was the first to highlight Clark's incredible rookie season. I, I don't think there's any surprise. I mean, she averaged 19 points, six rebounds, eight assists, one steal, scored the most points uh, by a point guard in WNBA history. The most amazing thing is not the unanimous rookie of the year, it's she's first team all WNBA. Sharp's praise for Clark set the tone for what would become a passionate defense of the young star. Stephen A. Smith soon joined in, emphasizing the unique challenges Clark faced in her rookie season. You know, for me, guys, it was a rookie masterclass. When you think about the statistics that Caitlin was able to put up, the way she was able to elevate her teammates, you have to think, Caitlin Clark comes in, the entire offense shifts, the entire offense gets faster. Kelsey Mitchell is running and she is making plays, Aaliyah Boston's making plays. Lex As the conversation progressed, it became clear that Andrea Carter and Molly Karam were more hesitant in their praise of Clark, particularly regarding her exclusion from the Olympic team. This difference in opinion sparked a heated debate. Earn it. How did the guards play that within the Olympics? How did they play? For sure, but we can't take how Caitlin finished the W season and, and pivot that to how she would have done in the Olympics. That's a completely different All I'll argument. Say to Shannon Sharp quickly challenged this perspective, pointing out the inconsistencies in the selection process. Chelsea Gray had only played one game before she went to the Olympics. Yeah, Dan, she yeah. was out playing down to Tarasi. The debate intensified as Stephen A. Smith joined Sharp in defending Clark, suggesting that her marketability should have been a factor in the Olympic team selection. You want to promote the sport. You put that girl up in there and people were appalled at that notion. This comment seemed to touch a nerve with Andrea Carter, who insisted on separating Clark's marketing appeal from her on-court performance. Point, and that was yes. what I was arguing with. That was what I was arguing with. The right. marketing yes, point for Caitlyn. What Molly is trying to say, and what I agree with, is now that we have seen how Caitlyn... The discussion reached a boiling point as Shannon Sharp accused Carter and others of trying to downplay Clark's achievements. Caitlyn Clark is box office. She's doing this. And instead of giving her credit, y'all tried to make it about, oh, y'all poo-pooing the old guard. Y'all never talked about the old guard like this. Stephen A. Smith echoed this sentiment, suggesting that some of the criticism directed at Clark stemmed from resentment over her sudden rise to stardom. Their objective, yeah. and what really was their agenda, is that they resented the fact that this young lady who came into the league, took it by storm, mm -hmm. and drew in a level of attention that they didn't, weren't able to, they weren't able to draw. Yeah. As the debate raged on, it became clear that the disagreement wasn't just about Clark's abilities, but about broader issues within women's basketball and sports media. That you want to promote the sport, you put that girl up in there, and people were appalled at that notion. Shannon Sharp drove this point home, accusing some critics of using past players' achievements as a weapon against Clark. 
done, but we should have been giving her the credit. We saw the ratings, we saw the merchandise sales, we saw the attendance, but y'all want to make it make it about something else. Oh, what about the women that laid the foundation? What about this? What about it? That ain't got nothing to do with Caitlyn Clark. As the segment drew to a close, tensions remained high, with neither side willing to fully concede their position. However, Andrea Carter did attempt to clarify her stance and acknowledge Clark's achievements. She has been incredible. She has had a phenomenal rookie season and done things we may never see again, especially with the outside noise that all of us just got mixed back into because she's a conversation starter and she will continue to be one of the best for that reason. Speaking of one of the best, this heated debate on first take exemplifies the broader discussions happening in the world of women's basketball. Caitlin Clark's meteoric rise has not only transformed the WNBA, but has also challenged existing narratives and power structures within the sport. Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith's passionate defense of Clark highlights the potential for new stars to elevate the entire league. Their argument that Clark's marketability should be embraced rather than viewed with suspicion reflects a growing understanding of the importance of star power in promoting women's sports. On the other hand, Andrea Carter and Molly Caram's more measured approach underscores the complexities of balancing tradition, merit, and marketing in professional sports. Their reluctance to fully embrace Clark's rapid ascension reflects concerns about respecting the legacy of past players and the established hierarchy within the league. As the WNBA continues to grow and evolve, discussions like these will play a crucial role in shaping the future of the league. The passion displayed by all parties in this debate demonstrates the deep investment many have in the success of women's basketball. Caitlin Clark's rookie season has undeniably been historic. I mean, she averaged 19 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, 1 steal, scored the most points uh, by a point guard in WNBA history. As Shannon Sharp pointed out, these numbers, combined with her impact on the Indiana Fever and the league as a whole, make a compelling case for her status as a generational talent. Stephen A. Smith's characterization of her season as a rookie masterclass seems apt, given her performance both on and off the court. However, the resistance to fully embracing Clark's rise, as demonstrated by some of the comments from Andrea Carter and Molly Caram, reveals an ongoing tension within the sport. There's a clear concern about how celebrating new stars might be perceived as diminishing the accomplishments of those who came before. This debate on first take serves as a microcosm of the larger conversations happening around women's basketball and women's sports in general. As new stars like Caitlin Clark emerge, the sport will continue to grapple with questions of tradition versus innovation, merit versus marketability, and how to best grow the game while respecting its history. As Caitlin Clark's career progresses, it will be interesting to see how these debates evolve. Will her continued success quiet her critics? Will the WNBA find ways to leverage her star power while also celebrating the accomplishments of established players? Only time will tell. What's clear is that Caitlin Clark has already made an indelible mark on the WNBA, sparking conversations and pushing the league into new territory. As Shannon Sharp so emphatically stated, Caitlin Clark is box office. Whether you agree with Sharp and Smith's full-throated defense of Clark or lean towards Carter and Karam's more measured approach, there's no denying that the future of women's basketball is bright, with stars like Caitlin Clark leading the way. As the WNBA playoffs continue and we look ahead to future seasons, these discussions will undoubtedly continue. The passion displayed in this first take segment demonstrates the growing interest and investment in women's basketball, which can only be good for the sport in the long run. In the end, while opinions may differ on how to best promote and develop the league, all parties share a common goal, seeing women's basketball thrive and reach new heights. As the debate shows, the path to achieving that goal may not always be smooth, but the determination and passion of those involved suggest a bright future for the WNBA and its stars, both current and future. Is ESPN disrespecting Caitlin Clark? The recent headline, Dewana Bonner Shut Caitlin Clark Down, set the internet ablaze. While the intention might have been to highlight Dewana Bonner's stellar defense, ESPN's framing of the narrative subtly undermined one of the WNBA's brightest rising stars, Caitlin Clark. The phrasing shifts the focus from praising Bonner to discrediting Clark. This isn't the first time ESPN has been criticized for such tactics. 
Let's break down the full story behind this headline and how ESPN continues to mishandle coverage of female athletes, particularly Caitlin Clark. The title used by ESPN, Dewana Bonner Shut Caitlin Clark Down, does more than just praise Bonner for her excellent defense. It diminishes Caitlin Clark's performance in a way that feels disproportionate. The phrase shut down evokes a sense of complete failure which doesn't reflect the full context of the game. Yes, Clark had an off night, but athletes having poor shooting performances isn't unusual. So why is ESPN framing this so sensationally? Clark, who has been pivotal to Indiana's success, finished with 11 points on 4 for 17 shooting. A below-average night, but not a complete disaster. Instead of focusing on Clark's resilience and Bonner's incredible game, ESPN opted for a headline that casts Clark in a negative light. This kind of sensationalism undermines the talents and contributions of both players involved. In addition to Sunday being game one of NBA playoffs, it was also Asia Wilson MVP day. She won her third career league MVP. This one, unanimous. Joins Hall of Famer Cynthia Duh. Cooper in 1997 to hold that distinction. And unanimous was really the only way this could have played out, though. She set a WNBA record in points, first to ever score a 1,000. Uh, scoring average was also a record. Caitlin Clark has been in the spotlight for her impressive performances throughout the season. In the postseason opener against the Connecticut Sun, Clark struggled to find her rhythm. She missed several wide-open shots and ended with only 11 points. However, as Clark pointed out in a post-game interview, her poor shooting wasn't due to any major defensive issues from Bonner alone. Caitlin Clark said, I felt like I got good shots. They just didn't go down. Honestly, a tough time for that to happen. I had three pretty wide open threes in the first half that I usually make. That's tough, but I tried my best. This quote showcases that Clark wasn't necessarily shut down. The shots simply didn't fall. Yet ESPN's headline implies total domination, which isn't reflective of Clark's efforts or the broader context of the game. On the other side, Dewana Bonner had an outstanding performance in this game, both offensively and defensively. Bonner is a seasoned veteran, finishing her 15th year in the WNBA and moving up the ranks in several statistical categories, including points and rebounds. Her defensive effort in guarding Clark is commendable. Still, it's worth noting that ESPN could have simply celebrated Bonner's contributions without painting Clark as a victim of total defeat. Bonner held Clark to a poor shooting night, but she also contributed 22 points, 5 rebounds, 5 assists, and 2 blocks. Her incredible all-around performance deserves to be the focal point of the coverage, not framed through the lens of shutting down another player told us that the Fever were one of the hottest dreams in the Olympic break. They were averaging over 90 yeah. points per game. Best yes. held to 69 points. First time being held under yeah. 70 points since the Olympic break. Mm -hmm. Talk about what the Sun did defensively so well. Well, we talk about basketball being a game of chess, and especially in the series and especially in the playoffs, you got to make a move. And how smart was the Connecticut Sun staff? Give Stephanie White credit for putting Dewana Bonner on Caitlin Clark to start the game. Mind you, Caitlin Clark and DJ Carrington have been going at it all season long, but you put Dewana Bonner who is six foot four? She's got great. Unfortunately, this is not the first time ESPN has been called out for sensationalizing its coverage, especially when it comes to women in sports. Female athletes often face headlines that either over sensationalize failure or downplay their achievements. Caitlin Clark, one of the most promising talents in women's basketball, deserves better than to be the scapegoat of a narrative that overshadows her hard work. This trend in media representation does more harm than good. By focusing on individual failings, ESPN risks overshadowing the achievements of women in sports who are making history in real time. Mm. Chalk, what is your biggest <laughs> takeaways from the three matchups that we've already seen? Well, even with Chalk, even when the higher seed wins the games, there are still things that have been very impressive. You take the New York Liberty, just the fact that they handled business. They took care of business at home after just losing to the Atlanta Dream. And then we go with the Minnesota Lynx. They didn't necessarily handle... As a rookie, Caitlin Clark has already established herself as a key figure in the WNBA. She was a top contender for Rookie of the Year and finished fourth in the most valuable player vote. These accolades alone prove her talent and determination.
However, headlines like the one from ESPN can slowly chip away at her growing legacy. Instead of celebrating her for her achievements, Clark risks becoming known for moments of failure that are blown out of proportion. I don't really get to stand up for myself. I have great teammates. I have a great support system. I got my hometown. I got my family that stands up for me. I don't really get to speak out on things just because I just try to ignore and I just try to stand strong. I've been through so much. I've seen so much. I've been attacked so many times. Death threats. I've been sexualized. I've been threatened. I've been so many things and I've stood strong every single time. And I just try to stand strong for my teammates because I don't want them to see me down and like not be there for them. So I just want them to always just know like I'm still a human. All this has happened since I won the national championship and I said the other day I haven't had peace since then. And it sucks and but I still wouldn't change. I wouldn't change anything and I would still sit here and say like I'm unapologetically But sometimes you just want to live a normal life. Angel Reese was quite clear on her wish after having known the dark side of popularity. It might be their rookie year in the W, but the Sky No. 5 and Caitlin Clark have already established what their historic rivalry can do. Their stats speak for themselves, and fans love comparing them to each other. It's a fact that both players have brought more attention than ever before to women's basketball. But at the same time, while the players are not directly involved, fans on each side throwing vitriol at each other has caused harm. But a gymnastics star from Reese's alma mater has a possible solution. In a recent conversation on Best of Both Worlds with Flau Jai, Olivia Dunn addressed how she deals with online and offline haters. As Johnson iterated how hard it is for student-athletes to handle studies, sports, and endorsements at the same time, Dunn agreed. The gymnast said, I'm sure you get it with people and trolls online, like even to just the, the art of like trying to stay silent during certain things, like saying one wrong thing can like... She is right. One misplaced word can impact her work. As a public figure, it's not easy to overlook trolls. Dunn continues, Ruin the business. Like, just being able to, like, keep your cool and composure, like, that's an art. And that's something that we need to do because we're also wow. representing LSU, and that's hard. Johnson agreed with her. Livy, I, oh, you know how many times I don't want to crash out on the internet? Or I don't type something up in my drawers oh, and yeah. have to delete it? <laughs> My Twitter fingers are like, I'm coming back. Especially as NIL earners, brand endorsements bring in more attention to athletes, which sometimes takes away from what they're trying to promote at the primary level. The joy of sports. On a podcast episode from about two weeks ago, Angel Reese had explicitly spoken about receiving extreme hate comments. While the Fever rookie is adept at staying silent and not giving more power to the rumors, the Sky Star has addressed some of the unwarranted hate and anger thrown her way. Dunn said, My Twitter fingers go crazy, but I can't press send because my case. I can't because you, you, you just can't because you know like you represent. First of all, it's like, you know, I'm not representing just myself anymore. Like, I'm representing brands. I'm representing LSU. Like, it's people that look up to me. It's a whole lot of people. Yeah. It's I'll an be art. With you now. It's I'll hard be with you. to like. Zip it. Sometimes I'm no better than and You know troll. I like to talk. <laughs> well, if trolls can easily say something, anything, from behind their screens, so can the people their comments are directed at. But given the large stage they stand on, as Dunn asserts, the art of staying silent comes in. While neither Johnson nor Dunn specifically mentions the Reese-Clark rivalry, the LSU player's advice could be taken by the pros as well. Interestingly, at one point in time, Flau J. Johnson and Angel Reese used to combat this criticism together as LSU teammates, but not anymore. They say college friends last a lifetime, but it's not always true. Certainly the case of Angel Reese and Flau J. Johnson is proof. Two women who used to be teammates on the LSU Tigers once upon a time. Relationship with all your teammates. I know uh, Angel recently said that you guys aren't as close, but that's just with distance yeah. and time. Yeah. Like, that's not like, you know, she said she was going to come back to you guys on. Yeah, most definitely. Um, yeah, me and Angel, we ain't like, as close as we used to be, but like, I still support her a thousand percent. You know, I was proud of her, like, just being the W and breaking records. A lot of people said that she wouldn't go to the W and do all those things, and they kind of hit it on her. But I kind of knew that because I seen it every day in practice. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I seen the mentality that she has. So it's been dope.
Let's see what Reese said on her podcast. Yeah, I still support Flage. We aren't as close as we used to be. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no hard feelings or anything, but we aren't as close as we used to be. That's why people always expect us to like still be posting each other and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But like we are as close. And I mean, it happens. Um, I mean, you, you don't have the best relationships for everybody and don't always continue relationships with people. So. Um, I wish her the best always. I'm always going to support her. I'm going back to LSU soon just to be able to see them and support the girls. But yeah, there's no love lost, but we aren't as close as we used to be. The Chicago Sky Forward clarified that there is no love lost between the two. And Reese even sent good wishes to Johnson when it was announced that she would perform at the ESPYs this year. It might not be long before Johnson joins her former teammate as a pro in the W, or she might choose her singing career over basketball. Either way, Though they may not talk to each other every day, Reese and Johnson will be supporting each other from afar. As for the fans, maybe not getting too involved in the rivalry of it all, but supporting the sport would be the best thing. There are thousands of people on social media who are questioning this injury. There are thousands of people on social media who are claiming that this Angel Reese injury is fake, or as Donnie Brasco would call it, a fugazi. Angel Reese's wrist injury has taken an unexpected turn. Fans are excited about some surprising new details. Caitlin Clark is at the center of it all. What's happening behind the scenes is hard to believe. Now, is there legitimacy to these claims? Would Angel Reese actually fake an injury? Would Angel Reese prematurely end her rookie season to spare herself the embarrassment? Here's the deal. Angel's career is on the line. While Caitlyn's is taking off, it's like a real-life sports drama unfolding. Angel is at a critical point, and everyone's wondering, will this injury be her downfall or her comeback? And even in her press conference, it didn't seem like anything was wrong. She didn't discuss an injury. So fans were actually really shocked when she came out and said that she would be out for the rest of the season. In the 24 hours after the news broke, the internet ran wild with conspiracy theories. They were wondering if she was truly injured. Here's where things take a fascinating turn. Some fans are questioning whether there's more to Angel's injury than meets the eye. Is it genuine or is she orchestrating a larger strategy while Caitlyn is setting records? The WNBA landscape is changing, and we're all struggling to keep pace. This has transcended basketball. It's now about uncovering Angel Reese's true identity and her next move. Buckle up for this wild ride. Basically, the doctors told me that I could either not get surgery or have surgery. The risk of not having surgery, I could literally have arthritis at 22 years old. That wasn't an option. Um, the bone could literally crack and literally completely shatter. Right now it's like a hairline, literally a hairline, like shatter, not even that big, but they're gonna put like a small little screw in it. Remember when Angel fell? It sparked a big mystery in the WNBA. Her injury might not be her biggest problem. Angel Reese was racing against the Los Angeles Sparks, ready to shine. After her shot, she fell and said she hurt her wrist. Yet, she was seen hitting the floor with that wrist. Then things took a turn. Angel claimed she had a fracture, but not just any fracture. It was in a tough-to-heal spot. Now she's faced with a hard choice. Risky surgery or early arthritis. Imagine being 22 and having to make that call. Angel's a poor shooter of the basketball. I, I don't know any other way to say it. She's just a poor shooter. And the Chicago Sky, at best this season, will be the eighth seed in the playoffs and probably get smoked by the Liberty first round, so what's the point? We've never seen official reports about this injury. Its details remain unclear, sparking fan curiosity. Is there more to the story? You might wonder how this impacts the Chicago Sky. Typically, losing a star player would hurt a team. Surprisingly, the Sky have continued as usual, with or without Angel. I also think it's going to be interesting to see how the Chicago Sky runs specifically their offense without Angel Reese on the court, because one thing that they have focused on this entire season through wins and losses is feeding the ball through Angel Reese. The, the offense has pretty much gone through her the majority of the season. It has worked in their favor in some ways, and it has caused some losses in some ways. And I also think that a player like Camila Cordosa, who was the number three pick 
pick in the WNBA draft. She has been pushed to the side and Angel Reese has been in that spotlight. Let's simplify this. The Sky's playoff chances are slim and Angel's absence isn't helping. The team is struggling either way. Now people are questioning if Angel is truly the game changer they believed. However, when it comes to play on the court, I think that Camilla Cordosa hasn't been able to find her groove and I don't think that the Chicago Sky have utilized these two players in the way that they probably should have because I feel like they have a pretty big threat with these two if they use them properly. So hopefully even with Angel Reese out through the rest of the season, they can maybe try some different lineups, try to run offenses a different way and maybe figure out what will work best going into next season. But wait, there's more. Angel's teammates are starting to speak up, and it's not looking good. After a crushing 31-point loss to the Washington Mystics, Camilla Cardoza didn't hold back. She called the performance embarrassing. Ouch. That's not just frustration, that's a teammate who's reached her breaking point. You might be wondering, is Angel really as upset as she appears? That's the key question. Some fans are looking closer and starting to think there's more to her injury than she's admitting. Is she using this break for another reason? Could there be a bigger plan we're not seeing? I'm still a rookie. I'm still figuring it out. Um, trying to figure things out. So if I am rookie of the year, God, thank you. You definitely won't be the rookie of the year. If I'm not, back, back to the drawing board. And I just want to win. Mm -hmm. Getting to the playoffs is something that I really, really, really want to do. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm not really thinking about rookie of the year. She's clearly thinking about it. It's evident on her face. She knows she might lose it. Just when the Angel Reese story seemed to peak, Caitlin Clark entered. She's not just playing basketball, she's changing the rules for newcomers. How is one player altering the WNBA so much? Saying Angel Reese is better than Caitlin Clark is saying Rodman was better than Michael Jordan or Ben Wallace was better than Kobe or even Andre Drummond was better than LeBron. And I shouldn't have to point out that Angel Reese is actually a poor defender. Let's discuss Caitlin Clark's impressive stats. She's averaging 23.4 points and 10.6 assists per game, leading the league. Remarkably, she's also made history. Clark is the first rookie to achieve two triple doubles in a season. Amazing, right? The WNBA's black superstars should thank their lucky stars for the record ratings Caitlin Clark is detonating even if new fans are mostly white fans. It doesn't matter what color eyeballs are. Clark's influence extends beyond statistics. The Indiana Fever? They're selling out arenas, both home and away. Fans flock to see Clark play. Each game turns into a showcase for her. Meanwhile, Reese isn't pleased. She's taking shots at Caitlin's fans. Um, I think there's a lot of racism when it comes to it, and I don't believe she stands on any of that. But when you come, when, when, when it's behind your name, that's when a lot of people are like, oh, they think, oh, I don't like her because her fans are saying this, this, this. No, I don't believe in her heart that she has hatred towards me. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm sure she believes that I don't have hatred towards her, but I think her fan base has gone, I'm talking about like, it's I, a lot. It's a lot. Like we see it all the time. I know y'all see it. Like mm -hmm. I literally saw something today that was like. You might be wondering how significant this is. Well, consider this. Clark's recent game against the Atlanta Dream drew viewers in droves. Its numbers rivaled NFL games all within the WNBA. That's impressive, but it gets even better. Angel Reese announced on Twitter that her rookie season as a WNBA dump diver is officially over. Hey there, lonely male followers, it's me, Angel. No bikini pics today because I have bad news. I have spent the weekend at Woke Memorial Hospital under the care of pretend Dr. Jill Biden. Jilly just informed me that I've got a boo-boo on my wrist. Ouchie! Clark is busy lifting her whole team. She's more than just a top scorer. She's improving everyone around her. It's like seeing a basketball expert lead an orchestra. Each pass and play clicks perfectly. Okay, but that being said, three in a row has never been done before in the WNBA. I don't believe that it's been done in the NBA. Now look at these numbers. Look at these numbers for the week of September 2nd to September 8th, 25 points per game 
4.3 made threes per game, 10 assists per game, 7.7 rebounds per game. Caitlin's take on the Angel Reese injury drama might surprise you. Instead of sparking rivalry, she's choosing sportsmanship. Clark said, It's sad to see anyone injured. Her drive is among the best in the league. So, amidst the drama, Clark is showing respect. She's not just acknowledging Reese's talent, but also her hard work. This shift in perspective could signal the end of rivalry. Perhaps it's the start of a new alliance. Yeah, I think it's obviously definitely sad. Anytime you see anybody go down with an injury, especially people that you came into this league with, whether it was Cam, whether it was Angel, especially Angel, like you want to see her finish out this year. Obviously, she's had a historic year and she's done some incredible things. And um, for me, like getting to play against her, like her motor is up there, if not the best in the league. Like she just doesn't stop working. So, um, you know, congratulations to her. I thought she had a tremendous year. Um, and I thought she came to the league and really did what she's done well her entire career as long as I've known her. So it's definitely devastating. That's never, never anything you want to see from a player. Um, and then obviously our rookie class has kind of been hit with a few more injuries than you, you would have liked to see. And I think, I don't know, I mean, for myself, I think just some of those things you can't avoid, especially in their two instances. Obviously, I don't know the specific details, but um, that's kind of what comes with basketball at times. So, um, you know, it's sad for them. But I think at the same time for myself, is just continue to take care of your body, take care of yourself. It becomes a long season, especially when, you're playing games with one day in between, like you really have to prioritize that. Um, but like I said, some of those things are just unavoidable and, and it's sad to see. Just when you thought this rivalry was predictable, Angel Reese surprises us. What if I told you she's considering a move that could redefine WNBA stardom? It's a decision that's splitting her fans. And to hate because I am a su successful black woman. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of things that you haven't seen before. Angel Reese just dropped a bombshell that has everyone talking. She said, I'd rather be rich than famous. Can you believe it? That's not something you hear every day from a rising basketball star. It's like she suddenly flipped the script on her entire career. I'd rather be like rich than famous. Like I'd rather be like, you. you everybody want to be famous, but like they don't really know what I like, come with it. Like. It's fun, like all the connections and stuff you make, but like sometimes you just want to live a normal life. Like we were talking about, like just being able to walk down the street casually. You might be thinking, isn't Angel just about basketball? But here's the twist. While dealing with her wrist injury, Angel has been busy off the court. She launched a podcast and shared dreams beyond basketball. Now, fans are left wondering what's up. Impact. I want to continue like just to normalize like fashion and women's basketball, women's sports, um, women being outspoken, just being able to have a voice and like being able to be outgoing and super outgoing and not just be OK, only men can do it like women can do the same thing. Some people are excited about Angel's new direction. They see her as smart for planning beyond basketball. After all, a basketball career is short. However, others are worried. They think she might lose focus on what made her famous. Angel is at a big crossroads. On one hand, she has the talent to shine in the WNBA. On the other, there are new opportunities. These include podcasts, endorsements, and new career paths. She's caught between two worlds and needs to make a choice. As she has in things off the court, and she has done more off the court than I feel like any other WNBA player in the league this season. She has been so busy with like commercials, brand deals, fashion things, the Met Gala, movie premieres, all of the things. One critique that I have of Angel on how she handled her rookie season, I honestly don't think that she should have ever taken on that villain role. And she said it herself, that's why I'm saying it here. Now things get interesting. What if this injury is more than a setback? What if it's Angel's big moment, like in superhero movies where the hero faces the toughest challenge? This could be her test. Will she return stronger and rule the court? Or will she take this chance to change direction? So I can no longer play pretend basketball, but don't worry, lonely men. You will still be able to see me on my podcast, and I'm sure my girl Lotto will give me a feature in her next music video titled Pretend Basketball Meets Pretend Rapper. <laughs> but wait, there's more. Angel isn't just deciding for herself. She's possibly changing the game for all WNBA players. Think about it. If Angel can balance basketball and building her brand, she opens doors for everyone in the league. She's not just playing basketball, she's strategizing her entire career. 
I'm gonna preface all of this by saying the rivalry worked. The media hyping up these two players and acting like Angel Reese has been in the Rookie of the Year conversation when in my personal opinion that just isn't even fair to her to say when Caitlin ran away with this a few months ago. Having that rivalry wor worked when it comes to viewership, when it comes to engagement, when it comes to all of those things. However, seeing Angel Reese in the media throughout the past three months and how she has come out multiple times and said how she gets a lot of hate online, she gets bullied, different things are sent to her. A lot of these things are alluding to the fact, and she even said that in her farewell letter that this is the first time that she will get a physical and mental break. I do think that some of this drama, and she started some of it, to be fair, got to her. So what's next for Angel Reese? Will she shock everyone by coming back stronger than ever to dominate the court? Or is she about to make a move that no one sees coming? One thing's for sure, whatever Angel decides, it's going to shake up the WNBA in a big way.